name is Tristan Threlkeld. I'm with Jet Global. I work with uh, the small and medium business market with Dynamics Nav and Business Central, um, as yeah, Dustin was mentioning as well. And we're here to go through Jet budgets for you. We're going to brief overview as a company first. Uh, Jet is a company that is, and take you through that and a couple of our solutions that um, will work with Jet budgets. And we'll key in on Jet budgets for sure. Demo that product for you guys and answer questions as they come up as well. And with that said, if you know if you have any questions during the time as we're going through this presentation, you can type them in the chat window um, or wait to the end, and we can uh, get those questions from you that time. Um, I also have one of my uh, uh, resources with me, Matthew DeYoung. Uh, I'd like for him just to briefly chime in here and introduce himself, and then we'll carry on with the showcase of the solution. Sure. Thanks, Tristan. My name is Matthew DeYoung, and I'm a solutions engineer uh, here at Jet Global. And I specialize mainly in the analytics and the budgeting products and doing pre-sales support and also some types of uh, technical support. Perfect. Well, uh, with that, we'll just kind of move on along and we'll start talking more about, you know, JET itself and the solutions we have. And, uh, you know, and we'll go from there on uh, getting into the demo portion and showcasing what that's like. Okay, so you know, uh, for Jet Jet Global, we've been in business for 16 years and counting. And what we do is we solve that tricky problem, of getting your data out of your database and the rest of your technology stack. Okay, now doing so in a way that has governance and control to guarantee that only the right people are seeing the right data at the right time. Okay, now we're delivering that data into the most commonly used business application, Microsoft Excel, and you know, along with a wide variety of other data visualization tools that are out there in the market today and you know with that said you you know most people on the call today may be familiar with that just just kind of re into uh, you know more putting it back out there so everybody's aware of what's going on there and what jet has to offer overall now with that portion right not only we're able to deliver data and get it from your erp and into excel right which most everybody's comfortable with and you'll get more of a flavor of that today but essentially what we're doing is, well, essentially in doing this, we help business users make better business decisions. You know, we're really, really good at doing it. We've developed products with and for Microsoft over the years, and that's part of the reason why we've got well over 200,000 business professionals across 94 countries utilizing JET on a daily basis. Okay. Now we talked about some of these uh, customers, right? And instead of just talking about it, here are some of them, right? And some of the different markets that we work with today. But I can tell you that, you know, any business and any type of market and industry is a good fit for Jet. And that's why we've got, you know, manufacturing here, logistics, supply chain, finance, you know, life sciences, even, you know, hospitality up to nonprofits, all the way across the board for customers, big and small and everything in between as well. Right, so everybody's a real good fit for Jet. Now, we move on Jet Reports. This is our, you know, our real-time reporting solution that bolts directly into Excel. Okay, and as I mentioned before, we've been in business for 16 years, and this is the solution that uh, you know we got started with, formerly known as Jet Essentials and Jet Professional. We went through a rebranding in October of this year, and so the product is still the exact same as it's ever been. Um, definitely improved with a new name, Jet Reports. Just directly to the point for you guys there and you know what it was built for at the time it was a core financial reporting product designed for finance folks okay now what we did with that is we gave the ability to actually use excel to communicate with your database right your erp that nav just running navigator or business central be able to communicate with that to be able to extract and pull that data that you want from any table any field and format it in any way that you want using excel how Excel will allow you to do that as well, okay? So kind of give you a better idea of that. Real-time reporting solution bolts into Excel, allowing you to be able to dive into that nav, Serenic nav, or business central database, extract the data you want to be able to build out and pull out the data for functional report capability there, okay? So that's a little bit on Jet Reports. Now, Jet Analytics, a little bit different here. This is our reporting and business intelligence solution all in one. Okay. The reason why I want to talk about that is because, you know, this might be something of interest for you guys out there, especially as business intelligence is really ramped up and uh, a lot of marketing from a lot of different companies is out there for that today. But I can tell you with Jet, the go-to on that for Dynamics Nav, Navigator, Business Central, right? And what it really does, Jet Analytics allows you to have access to all your different data sources that exist in your company, okay? It allows for all different types of reporting 
from something simple, you know, ad hoc with pivot tables to something more sophisticated with dashboard style, if you will. To be able to tie that data together from all the different places you have. And one of the main uh, problems or uh, issues that uh, Jet Analytics will solve for is the issue of data integrity, right? That's really important, right? To, you know, making sure you're protecting your data over there and getting it the right, correct data to be able to drive your business forward. And when I say that, right, anytime you really combine different data sets together, you're going to have to be able to make some decisions around it and how you're going to be able to do that. And unless you do that at a corporate level, you know, different individuals are going to be making different decisions about it, right? Well, with Gen Analytics, that allows actually you to do that decision making at a unified corporate level overall. OK, it's about putting all of your data in one place, governing the way it's combined, really governing the way you choose to look at your data from the top down, combining in a way that makes the most sense for your business. So if you're looking for ease of use, you're looking for speed and more efficiency. Jet Analytics is something you want to take a look with. And I know we're here to talk about and showcase jet budgets, but you will need jet reports or jet analytics to get and use jet budgets. So it's got to cover those bases for you guys. Now, I'm going to come over here and cover the Jet Hub. The Jet Hub comes with either Jet Reports or Jet Analytics. Um, it's an add-in solution that comes with it automatically. Okay, So what the Jet Hub is, it's a centralized report and dashboard repository. Okay, And it's something that you, as in the customer, would host. It would sits on a SQL server via IIS. Um, if you're in a hosted environment, we work with that as well. We're compatible and able to function there, no problem. And what that allows you to do, essentially, you know, untethers you from the desktop. Instead of to being, you know, tied to your desk, you know, working through, you know, being connected to your network at your desk in the office, now you can still do that with your desktop or laptop, but you can also get it remotely as well, meaning you can actually get access to your reports and or dashboards with your smartphone or your tablet, and yes, also your laptop as well. So imagine, if you will, being able to have the capability from your home um, or you're on the road or if you're doing work while you're on vacation at the sandy beach, you can go in, as long as you have internet access, you can go into the Jet Hub that is yours, right, specific to your organization with your reports and dashboards. You can log in there, run your reports, toggle through the filter parameters, and get access to your reports to see what's currently going on and keep everything up to date and fresh moving forward. Okay. Now, I talk about this because you need the Jet Hub to be able to get Jet budgets. Okay. And with that said, you know, you want to have, you want to be on NAV 2013, Serenic Navigating 2013 or newer. Most everybody that we work with has that. Um, or you can be on Business Central. We work with either of those, any of those platforms for you guys, your, your, your ERP. And we're able to tie into that data source you have, extract that data you want, and have access to reports with the Jet Hub on you know, a global level. So there was that portion of it. Now, with that said, because we talked a, you know, a little bit about it, we're going to go into more on Jet Budgets. Okay. A little bit on jet budgets, you know, really what it is, it's a simple, adaptable and easy to use fiscal planning solution that controls and streamlines the budgeting process within Excel and on the web, whether you're using again Dynamics 365 Business Central, Nav or Serenic Navigator. OK, trying to give you a better understanding and idea on that. And as I mentioned, you know, it's through the hub. So as you can see here on the slide, it is web based, just like the Jet Hub is. It's bolted directly in there. You know, so it's a web based solution for being able to get streamlining and controlling the budget creation and the, fis and the fiscal planning process there. Being able to, you know, really enables you guys to collaborate, you know, improves your accuracy overall and really saves a lot of time for your budget owners, you know, at your as organizations there, you know. Especially those that are using a current budgeting process that requires, you know, managing multiple spreadsheets that can be messy. They, those can be error prone, right? And those are very time consuming as well. You know, it just kind of, we're all there. We've understood it. We've been through that process. We know it's very time consuming to go through that process. But Jeb Budgets was built to integrate with Business Central and Nav or Navigator to help streamline that process and speed up that process for you. Okay. So it was designed for small and medium businesses that use business central or navigator overall and it's going to be the right tool for anyone who's you know who creates or is involved in the budgeting process and struggles with reconciling and managing the disparate and inconsistent spreadsheets that are spread out through the organization those are you know that are hard to govern and control right 
They're not really either of those. They're not really governed. They're not really controlled. Jeb Budgets actually enables automated assignment workflows and status visibility as well to be able to streamline the budgeting process through the Jet Hub, okay, while being able to utilize the power of Jet Reports. And, you know, really kind of combining all of it together, really kind of integrating for, you know, actual to plan reporting in an Excel environment that users, you know, that you guys are already familiar with. OK, so imagine being able to not only build a budget, you know, but how about being able to build a budget to actual report? Jet budgets with jet reports allows that possibility to happen efficiently, easily. Uh, and pretty quickly for yourself there. So this is a, a brand new solution for us. It, you know, we just released it to the public, to the globe, if you will, on October 1st of this year. You know, and really what it was designed for was to fill that gap in dynamics, you know, that really is costly. It's complex of the, you know, the, the CPMs, those corporate performance management tools that have so many functions out there that most small and medium business companies and organizations don't really need. OK, you know, and the manual budgeting process that involves the disorganized Excel spreadsheet management. OK, while those CPMs are targeted at bigger companies overall, you know, they provide really complex financial solutions. Jet Budgets actually offers the right features and functionality for the small and medium businesses and organizations and nonprofits without overcomplicating the process or solution. OK, now. A little bit finishing touch here before we jump in to start showcasing the solution here is the jet budget is turnkey here. It really, like I mentioned to you before, once you have the jet hub up and running, which is really quick to do, install and set up, we be able to flip the switch once you decide to move forward with jet budgets and it populates there in your jet hub. So again, it's turnkey, out of box solution that takes just a couple minutes to get up and running for you guys. Not hours, not days. And really, that's one of the major advantages of using jet budgets is that you don't have to worry about the configuration process because that does not pose a huge administrative burden on your company, organization, and nonprofit. Okay, it does not incur large technical resource costs. Okay, so that's a good uh, base coverage on that for you to give you a better understanding and idea of what this uh, solution is and what it can do for you and your organization. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to carry this over. Let's go through a demo here. Um, let me open up here and make my associate Matthew DeYoung, as he introduced himself earlier, to you guys and have him present for you overall. So give me a second here and make that happen. All right, Matthew. Thanks, Tristan. As you were saying, this is the, the Jet Hub, which is our IAS-based, our, our web-based uh, report and budgeting repository. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in here. The first thing that I like to note is that, uh, particularly for IT departments, this is important, that the JET budgeting system is, is kind of bolted into a lot of the existing components in your JET environment. This is the biggest example, I guess, right here, is that uh, this budgeting system is integrated in with the hub. So that's good news because you don't have to set up a separate infrastructure for it. Uh, you don't have to set up a separate server, a separate database server, or anything like that. We're going to share all those components. Those are all going to be integrated in with your existing JET environment. So before I uh, move on here, I wanted to talk about the different types of users that are available. We've got three different types of users in the JET budget system. We've got an owner, which is a user that actually created the budget and can change the structure of the budget. So basically, the owner can do anything that they want with it. They can also enter the numbers into the budget and they can approve them, Okay, which are the other two types of users. We've got the owner and then we've got what we call a contributor. And a contributor is the person that gets assigned a work item uh, to actually enter numbers in. The third type of user is an approver, which like the, like the name says, that approver is the one that can approve one or more work items. Uh, after the numbers have been entered in. And obviously, the same user can occupy more than one role. So, you know, you could be, it all depends on your budgeting process, but uh, you could be assigned a work item to enter numbers in, and you could be the, the approver of it. You could be all three. 
you know, you could create a budget, enter your numbers in, and then uh, those numbers would be approved automatically, okay? So there's lots of flexibility there. So let's see, I'm just going to go back to my main page here. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to go in and show creating a new budget because what, the, the reason I like to do this is just to show the tight integration that we have with Dynamics Nav and um, a D365 Business Central. Okay, so I'm going to give it a name, a description if I'd like. These data sources here, these come out of your existing JET environment. Okay, so again, we're going to share all that information. You don't have to maintain two different sets of data sources, one for reporting and one for budgeting. That's all part of the same infrastructure. Once I select a data source, the system is going to go out and it'll, it will query what companies exist inside that data source. And we're going to choose a company. We're going to budget from within one company at a time. Okay. The date range can be uh, it can be 12 months if you'd like. It can be a, really any any combination of months here. Okay, so you could do a 15 month or uh, or that kind of thing. I'm just going to enter January through December. Okay, and then when I hit next, what it's going to do is it's going to go out and it will query your nav system and it will query all the dimensions that you have set up because there are two things that the budgeting system relies on from NAV. The first is GL accounts, and the second is dimensions. So GL accounts, obviously, those are what you're entering your numbers against, okay, because obviously you want to track that and you want to be able to compare that to um, actual costs and actual numbers being put into those GL accounts. Dimensions are the different ways that you can slice and dice this. And, and set it up. We can do filtering. We can do splits on different dimensions. I'll show you all this when we start creating work items. Okay. For right now, I'm just going to select all of them. Uh, I believe that the base nav product only lets you select four of these to budget against. We can. Uh, there's really no limit in the JET budgeting system. Okay. So once I say create here, it's going to go out, create that budget, and then just kind of give me an overview here. And as you can see, it's not really exciting. Uh, I don't have any numbers in there. So I'm going to hop out here, and I'm going to pull up one that I've already got set up just because it's got some more numbers in here. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to show an overview page. The overview is just going to give you kind of a snapshot of the budget. You can very quickly see what the status is of different work items. A work item is... Uh, these items that are not in bold, uh, and a, a work item are, are actual line items on the budget that you enter numbers into. The bolded items here are referred to as sections, and those are basically a way to structure your budget um, and also create roll-ups. Okay, so as you can see here, I created a section called sales resources, and I've got two different work items those are all those are both going to roll up into that one section. So I'm going to go over to the work tab here. The work tab is probably where you'll you'll do most of your work uh, when you're designing uh, the structure of your budget, okay? Again, we've got sections, we've got work items here. Uh, adding a section is simply a matter of right-clicking and saying add section. So let's say I'm going to add a section called Sales Retail, okay? And what I want that to do is uh, basically after you create a section, you can drag and drop different things around here. You can put them in different order, okay? So that's, that's pretty straightforward there. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a work item underneath it. And this work item is the actual kind of meat and potatoes of the system, all right? So there are two choices when you create a work item. You can either enter that data yourself or you can assign that data to another user, a.k.a. a contributor for that work item. So that's what I'm going to do for this first example. I'll assign it to a different user. And I'll just call it sales 
uh, actually retail sales in North America, okay? We have the option of choosing a template here. You can create templates that uh, kind of speed up data entry. Right now, I'm just gonna leave that blank because I wanna show you how to do this kind of from scratch. Once I hit create, this is where we're gonna actually create that structure of this work item. So on the left-hand side are all of the GL accounts in your NAV system, okay? On the right-hand side, what you'll see is, you'll see this work item be, being built kind of on the fly as I choose accounts and different dimension options here. You'll see that budget being, uh, being built on the right-hand side there. So let's go down here. Uh, I've got retail sales. I'll do that. And maybe I'll just throw my uh, consulting fees and maybe some discounts in there, okay? So that's gonna build, as I said, on the right-hand side here. And let's say that we wanna filter this guy out by department. Again, we've got the choice of filtering and splitting by any of these dimensions. So this is a sales item, so I'm just gonna filter it out. I only want sales, okay? But uh, let's say this particular person that I'm going to assign this work item to is only responsible for medium and small business, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do here, is I'm gonna split this by this customer group dimension and only include medium and small business. So you can see what that did on the right-hand side. It's gonna replicate each of these GL accounts for each of those dimension splits there. Okay. When I'm satisfied with that, I'm gonna hit next. And this is gonna bring us to a screen where we actually assign an approver, which I'll just assign it, uh, assign myself as the approver. And the contributor, this is the person that actually gets a notification and is allowed to go into that work item and enter numbers in, okay? I'm just gonna choose a user called budgets here. You have the ability to enter a budget allocation. It is optional. Let's say that this work item maybe represents $10,000 total. So you could tell this contributor you've got $10,000 to split among the different months on this work item. And the system will actually decrement that and it will give you feedback on how much budget you have left to allocate. Okay. So this, I'm going to uh, give it a deadline. I'm gonna say it's due at the end of the year. The deadline is what works on uh, reminders. You can set up reminders in the system. When a contributor is assigned an item, a work item, they automatically get sent an email telling them that they've got an item waiting to be worked on. Uh, but you can also set up reminders, like let's say five days before the item is due, send a reminder email. Uh, if the item is overdue, maybe send out an email every day saying, hey, you've got an outstanding work item here. You need to go in and, and enter data into there. You have the ability to add a message here, just like a general message related to the work item. And you'll see this when we start entering data in and, and using more of the functionality on the work items. You kind of have, you have the ability to send messages back and forth and kind of a chat dialogue on what's going on with the work item. So that's gonna be pretty helpful if you're, maybe you're a manager and your employee is entering their numbers in and they used some type of multiplier and then they noted that in the, in the notes. It's a way to communicate back and forth like that. You have the ability to add any files, any kind of supporting files that you want, that you would do that here with the add files dialog. You also have the ability to force this work item to be entered using Excel, okay? And I'm gonna show you that. There's two different ways to enter data into a work item. There's Excel data entry, and then there's also just uh, what we call direct data entry or entry right into this web interface, okay? And I'll show you the difference there. So for right now, I'm just gonna hit send, okay? And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create this item here. 
the status has not started because that budget user has not opened it yet. So now I'm going to go over and I've got a different browser up here. This is that budget user. So I wanted to show you what this looks like to that user. The user got an email. They went into the budget system. First thing you'll notice is they it's a, it's a limited view because they're only assigned certain things. All of those other budgets that I had, they, they don't have anything to do with those. So those aren't going to show up here. Uh, when they launch or when they go in and display the details of that budget, all they're going to see are the work items that they're responsible for. So again, it's a, a very much pared down view. It only shows them what's applicable to them. Okay. What I can do here is I can select that, click on open. And this is where it gives me the choice. Do I want to enter that data online or do I want to enter it in Excel? Okay. I'm going to say online for this example. An online, online entry would be great for things like um, maybe like utilities or something like that. Something that's pretty st uh, straightforward and standard. You just want to go in there and zip your numbers in there really quickly. You don't want to actually create an Excel spreadsheet and, and pull that down. That's what this would be good for. But you do have some kind of Excel-like functionality in here. So let's say that I entered 1,000 here, 2,000 here. You have the ability to copy that down, kind of like in Excel. Uh, you even have some very, uh, very limited capability for uh, different types of calculations. So let's say my small business represents like 50% of my medium business. I could say C4 times 0.5, and that will automatically calculate based on that, okay? So there we go. I got my numbers in there. I can either save this, which would basically put it kind of in a holding pattern. Over on my administration screen, it would say that it's in progress. Once I am done and I want to actually submit these numbers, I'm going to click on Save and Submit. Okay. And here's what I was talking about with kind of like the, the chat dialogues here. So please approve. I used 50% as a uh, multiplier. Okay. All right. So now once I submit that, the item shows as pending approval. And over here on my my owner screen here, I'll just go off and then I'll go back on to work. I should see an item here that's for pending approval. Okay. Now there's a few different things I can do with this. I can take a look at the data. Oh man, look at the note. Oh, they use 50%. I really wanted them to use 60% instead. So what I can do is I can send this send this item back. And I can tell sixty percent instead. So that will actually place it back into an in progress status, and then that budget user would go back in, and they would see that they have an item to to address there. Okay. For right now, I'm just going to cancel this. I'm going to approve it, and I'll say. So now that item is approved, all right? That was a pretty simple example. What I'd like to do now is kind of pivot over to a little bit, probably more of a real life example for a little bit more complicated budget process. Typically when you have a budget process, you want to access things like the actual numbers that have been spent uh, last year, what was the budget set to last year, things like that. You may even want to reference like uh, worksheets or different types of calculations to derive the numbers inside of your budget. So that's where that Excel data entry lends itself. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down and under vehicle expense, I'm going to add a new work item. Okay. This one, I'm going to enter the data myself and I'll just call it 
vehicle expense. This time I'm gonna choose a template that I've got created. Basically what that does is it automatically pulls in all of these expense accounts. It automatically filter, filters it by my sales department and automatically splits it by the salesperson dimension. Okay, that's what I'm doing here with this template. So really everything looks good. I'm just gonna say finish. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enter this data in Excel. When I choose that, what it's gonna do, because I'm using Chrome, it's gonna save the file first. Uh, if you're using IE, you could probably, I believe you have the choice of just opening it directly. But <clears throat> I'm gonna pull this file up and what you're gonna see is that that structure is gonna be very, very similar to what you saw when I was direct entering data in, okay? But there's gonna be some changes here. So this is a standard Excel spreadsheet. This area right here, this area contains special JET functionality. So this is the JET functionality that's actually gonna interact with the budgeting system here, okay? But the other cells within this spreadsheet are pretty much wide open. We can do whatever we want here. So uh, I can do something as simple as just, like I did before, entering my numbers directly in, or maybe what I could do is, uh, maybe I would wanna add uh, some information, some, maybe I would wanna add like a worksheet or something like that. So let me pull that up here. Let's say this is a worksheet I got from my sales manager for vehicle expense. And what I wanna do is I wanna include that with my budget entry so that the person entering the contributor can reference that. So I'm gonna copy it from that and I'm just gonna paste it in here. Okay? So now we've got this little budget worksheet here. I can change my multiplier to be whatever I want. Maybe I want 5% increase. Once I get it the way that I want it, I can just go ahead and copy this data into here. Probably want to go in and do some formatting on it. Okay. But that's a real simple example of using the, uh, the power of Excel and JET functionality to interact with your budget system. This is also where you would likely use JET reports to also bring in data. So the example I was giving before about, you know, January through December of 2018, what were the what were the budget numbers and what were the actuals in my variants? Well, that's a pretty standard report in JET reports. So there's nothing that is stopping me from entering that into one of these tabs so that I can reference it when I'm entering my numbers in. So basically anything in this area is gonna get sent back to budgets. Anything outside of that, you can use for supporting information, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'll just copy this over. And the difference here between the save and submit, I'm gonna save this into my budget system here. It's gonna bark at me to save the file first, okay? Once I save it in the budget, it's gonna go back and it's gonna display that item as in progress. It's not gonna say that it's awaiting approval yet because I haven't actually submitted those numbers. I can go in here, I can preview them. Okay, it looks good. So what I can do is I can go in and actually submit those numbers. What's gonna happen is it's gonna automatically approve it because I am I was the contributor. If you're the, the contributor and the approver, it automatically assumes that you're going to approve, you know, your own work items that you enter in, okay? Here's the area where I set up that template. Again, pretty straightforward. It's just like you're entering a brand new uh, work item, but you're entering it as a template instead. Okay. 
All right. So, Tristan, what do you think? Do you have anything that you wanted to bring up or uh, anything specific that you wanted me to show? Well, we've gone over a good amount. I mean, you've gone over showing, you know, what it's using budgets out of the Jet Hub side of things. You showed what it's like to kick it out of the hub into Excel. You showed what it's like to be able to work within Excel as well and how everything ties together really nicely. And I know you discussed some pieces about, you know, being able to build reports and, you know, kind of inter interconnecting the two. But would you be able to kind of briefly cover that specifically, um, just to kind of make it clear for everybody, what is it like using Jet Budgets with, say, maybe an already built report or maybe tying in a report you're going to build within a budget? Mm -hmm. just sure. So th this kind of gets into maybe like a forecasting type of conversation. I know that I get that oh. question sometimes. Um, yeah, exactly. Something along those lines. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, like Tristan said, this isn't a CPM tool. It's not made for necessarily forecasting, but you have all of the power of jet reports behind you here. So like I was, like I was showing here, the simple example of a worksheet, you could go in here and you could create different jet functions here that pull data out of the budgeting system. Okay. So, for example, I'll switch my data source over to my budget. Uh, I've got, I'm working on a 2019 budget. I want to pull something else in from a different year. So I could use the standard GL function. This is probably, this is going to be familiar to anybody that uses jet reports. But now I have an additional choice here of a data source from jet budgets. Okay. So all I have to do is tell it which budget I want to pull data from, okay? And uh, again, these very familiar items, the account, starting and end period, you can even tell it, I don't want anything that's unposted or unapproved to show up here. So what I would do is that, uh, that method would be used all the way across to pull in data from, you know, from not only jet budgets, but any other jet data sources that you want. Perfect. And did you already talk a little bit on spreading and stuff as well? You covered a little bit on that as well, what that can, what that's like. Yep. As in uh, spreading across, across yep. the months like exactly. this. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So basically, uh, again, uh, it could be base Excel functionality, just a matter of copying the numbers over or you could enter formulas in here to make that happen. You know, that's your choice. What about like, you know, non-financial values, right? What, what like um, quantities, units, et cetera, something like that. What's that like? Sure. Well, uh, as long as those non-financials are being tracked, you know, within a GL account, then we can interact with the budget on it. Uh, we can also, if it's, let's say that that's from a, a a source outside of NAV, we could certainly, uh, using Jet Reports, pull the data in and display it so that you could interact with it. So that's what you would, those would be the choices that you'd have there. Okay, okay. You know, what about budgets? Does it, you know, does it support the ability to change like drivers and variables in one place and have them automatically update the budget? Absolutely. You could, again, it's really a matter of how complex you want to get within your Excel spreadsheet here, within your report sections. Okay. I can reference anything on any of these sheets in any type of report, just like the, the standard JET reports functionality. You have the power of that at your, at your fingertips. Okay, perfect. And, you know, when you're in the Jet Hub, right, whenever you're doing the communication and, and, you know, be able to comment back and forth, a little bit on that, right? You know, if I'm in that and maybe I'm the budget owner, am I able to see everybody's comments as the budget owner, like as we're communicating and going through the work items together? Or what's that like? Mm -hmm. As the budget owner, you have access yeah. to everything. Okay. So any, any of these comments that are on any of these work items, you have access to. Also, if you're the contributor and yeah. or approver 
on work items. You also see all that correspondence. But really what this is designed for is multiple, uh, multiple contributors in different areas. So if I was assigned the contributor on raw material sales, for instance, and I, I typed a note in, if there was a contributor that was on resources but not on raw materials, they wouldn't see that note. So it will respect the permissions that we've set up within the budget. Very well. You know, I think to uh, kind of also tie in here, um, be clear with how many users an organization would get, budget users that is, with the Jet Budgets license. And something you and I can kind of speak to on that is you would get unlimited budget users with uh, the solution there. And that means that you can decide you can have as many budget owners and or contributors as you would like within your organization as long as you have a current JET reports or JET analytics license. Uh, that's my understanding. That's the way I've, uh, I've put it to. Is that your understanding as well, Matthew? It is. Absolutely. So, uh, and again, this users area, adding these users to the budget, is that is actually pulling it from your list of, of viewers over okay. on the, the jet report side. Do you need to be a specific, you know, to be a specified or named jet designer to use jet budgets? Or is it just you have to be a registered user as in a designer or a viewer? You can utilize the budget system with just a viewer license. So okay. basically the, the unlimited viewers give you the ability. Any viewer can participate in any budget. You don't have to have that a report designer designation or anything like that. Well, that's really great. So it's pretty much wide open then based on what the organization would need. Not wide open that anybody can have it, but that the organization can decide whether, as long as they have them set up as a viewer, they can decide whoever they would like within the organization to be mm -hmm. the budget owner or contributor, correct? Right. Okay. Right. That's great. Do we know if we had any other questions? Um, I'll kind of pitch it back there to Justin and his team. Do we have any questions or anything like that come in that we can go over on top of what uh, we've we've gotten here so far? Yeah, so this is Stuart. I, I'm not sure if these ones were came through, but I picked up a couple. Um, uh, did you guys talk about the one getting you know working with Serenic Nav? Yeah, and we can and we can cover that. Um, me and Matthew both can. Um, but yes, we do work with Serenic Navigator. We work with Navision Nav and Dynamics Business Central, uh, Dynamics 365 Business Central as well. With Serenic Nav and also Nav in general, you want to have at least the 2013 or newer model uh, for your as a self there for you know compatibility and functionality. Which majority of customers today that have Serenic Nav or Nav in general have that version or newer, so it should be fine there. And uh, the other question that I picked up was, what does the implementation look like? That's a great question. It, it's a nice and fluid implementation, and it's more is probably a question that I should have Matthew take, um, you know, since he's the technical resource here, and have him jump in. Sure. So first of all, if you already use the Jet Hub then basically there is no implementation other than enter your budgets in from an infrastructure standpoint. I believe it's just swapping out the registration key that unlocks the budget system. So, but other than that, if you're, if you're starting from scratch with your JET infrastructure, this is uh, the JET hub rides on top of an IAS server and it's a standard website. You, um, it, you are required to Secure it with a, an SSL certificate so that it's it's secure going over the wire. Yeah, that's all the questions that came in. I'll just uh, flip it over to Justin and see if he had any last-minute questions that he picked up. Yeah, thanks, sir. You guys uh, were mentioning uh, the licensing where, you know, if you're already a JET user, whether you're a designer or a viewer, you would be able to do the be a JET budget user. How does the licensing work for actual JET budgets? Is it a an add-on feature to your existing gen, uh, package, or how does that work, Tristan? That's a great question, Justin, and you know that's uh, you know, that's a really good question because I thought I mentioned that, but let's be clear with it. Um, jet budgets is an add-on to a jet license, so that's why I was mentioning before you need to have jet reports or jet analytics, which is the, um, our license solutions to be able to add in jet budgets to your jet license. So as long as like, a customer has one of those two. 
And again, as long and with Nav or Navigator 2013 or newer, or if they're on the most recent version or the newest releases of Dynamics uh, 365 Business Central, they're all compatible in that regard. Um, but to be clear, you need to have one of the solutions, Jet Reports or Jet Analytics, to uh, utilize and purchase Jet budgets. Okay, great. And just for confirmation, Jet, uh, the free version of Jet, Jet Express is dot, would not count for that, correct? That is correct. That's exactly right. And Jet Express is it's still out there. Um, it's now known as Jet Basics, just to be on the same page for everybody. And that will not allow you to be able to, to purchase or utilize Jet budgets. You do need Jet Reports, the paid solution, or Jet Analytics, the other paid solution that's the BI tool. Okay, great. Great. Thank you. Uh, great questions. Thank you. Any other questions? That's all I have on my end. Okay. You guys still see the screen. I just changed presenters back to myself. I wanted to kind of go over this last piece and showcase the, you know, the year in advantages we have, the discounts we have going on. Currently with Jet Budgets, as we just did that demonstration there, um, standard pricing is $5,000 plus annual enhancement. As you can see, we're doing a 50% promo on that. It's going to be good through the 21st of this month. Um, you just need to purchase by that date or place your order by that date, that is. And you're going to get the cost half off. So it would be $24.95 plus enhancement for yourselves in that regard. If you're um, a uh, subscription customer, we have promos going on there as well. And that's $2.25 a month for the subscription side of things. And as you can see, we're running a year-end promo on our solutions as well. Just want to tie that in that if um, – you are looking to bring uh, come on to Jet. Now is a great time because you're going to save a good amount of money. It's 25% off the software cost, which is the largest discount that we've ever had as an organization. I'll even go to the length of saying, actually, I've never had anything above $500. So this is a really good discount and promo we're doing. And it goes on anybody that's bringing wants to come on to Jet new or if they maybe want to upgrade or if you're a current uh, Jet subscription customer we have a special promo for you guys as well to take advantage on a year-over-year -year pricing so if you have any questions from uh, for yourselves there please reach out to justin and his team and he'll be sure to get us and uh, get you in touch with us and get the your questions answered on our special pricing and on the solutions we have as well great thank you tristan yeah thank you as well i think that's it that's all i had to be able to kind of showcase for you guys today Tristan, again, thanks for showing us all the information today. Um, if anyone wants to have a deeper dive into the product or wants to uh, discuss any kind of pricing or ordering, uh, please reach out to me and I'll get that information to you right away. In addition, we will be following up with everybody from the webinar today to uh, get you a link to the, a recording of this.